Hunt with passion. Never stop casting. Chase the dream. Welcome to Season 5 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Brought to you by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. And by Recon Boats. Made by craftsmen. Built for fishermen. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to this musky quick tips video. On this week's episode, I want to talk to you guys about the Glide Raider. It's been a couple years since I've done a Glide Raider video. Hopefully you can even hear me in this video with the wind. Boy, has it been a windy season so far. Anyway, I'm throwing the Glide Raider on St. Croix's Legend Elite Muskie. This is their LEM 7.6 uh, Extra Heavy Fast Action. It's an extra heavy fast. Uh, it's a great rod for uh, quick twitches, pops, uh, it's nice and stiff for throwing a heavy lure like this, and uh, I've got uh, JBO's just standard piano wire steel leader here. Um, actually, on this particular uh, setup that I'm throwing, I have actually the snap on there. I'll probably end up cutting that off and going to the old traditional no BS system. I want to talk about the Glide Raider because, well, I haven't talked about it in a couple years in a, in a uh, educational video. And it's a lure that I'm really utilizing a lot when it comes to castbacks on muskies that have followed. A lot of times we got muskies that uh, follow in on side imaging and either, you know, sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. If you don't see them and they come up on side imaging, what's a lure that you're throwing on these fish? Well, for me, it's the Glide Raider. I'm throwing the Glide Raider on a lot of these muskies. It's a great, especially if you're on big fish water, it's a great lure for big fish. And I want to just kind of go over um, the tactic that I'm utilizing when I'm working this lure, or my, I should say my technique. A lot of clients that I have struggle with the Glide Raider, and it's one of my favorite lures. In fact, I caught my biggest muskie on it of all time, so I really like it. But it takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of skill or a little bit of practice, I should say, to work this thing properly. So here's here's the technique. First of all, for every, this is a big thing to think about, for every zigzag of the lure, so every zig and zag, every dart left and dart right, for every one of those, it is one retrieval, one complete revolution of the real handle. So when I try to tell clients, and I, I try to tell anybody I'm fishing with, when you're working this glide raider, every glide that it makes, the way that I work it should be one complete revolution of the reel handle. So let me show you here. So throw it out there and every time that glider goes back and forth, it's one complete crank of the reel. One complete revolution of the handle in order to get that lure to go side to side. That's one thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a number of tips at you here with the Glide Raider. Another thing that you need to consider here when you're working the Glide Raider, and this is a big one, because a lot of folks ask you, well, how do, I, how do I keep this lure down? How do I keep the Glide Raider nose down? It's popping out of the water. A couple things that I'm doing here, essentially, so in combination with the uh, revolution of the reel handle, I'm throwing, now I'm not going to do it in this, in this exact scenario here just because the wind's so bad and I'm on spot lock. But what I'm, what I'm doing when I'm throwing this lure is I'm throwing it a little bit ahead of the boat. And the reason for that is to generate some slack line. So again, throwing it ahead of the boat to generate slack line. And then what I'm going to do on my first couple pumps of the, of the Glide Raider is I'm, I'm really pumping my rod tip down. I'm, I'm really pushing the bait down under the water column. Uh, that usually keeps it right under the water surface. Now, if it does come up high, it's a perfect opportunity for a pause. A lot of times when that glide rater, you know, gets a little high on the water surface, I'll pause it. I'll, I'll just let it kind of sink back down. So those are the three keys that I'd say I really focus on when I'm working the glide rater, when I'm throwing this back. And again, uh, I really like this lure for so many reasons, but you know, it does have a tendency to work higher in the water column. I like that, especially when I'm working shallow cover. When I'm fishing cabbage or when I'm fishing shallow rock structure, I do want this glide raider to kind of run higher. 
I have some of them that tend to run deeper, some of them that tend to run higher, but uh, that's that's just my, my take on that. I like that it runs kind of high. But again, I'm just gonna kind of go over this again, my three keys to glide rider success, um, and then I'll show you one more thing. Cast ahead of the boat to generate some slack, and push the rod tip down, even down into the water, on those first couple glides of the glide rider. And then it's one revolution of the reel handle per glide. Once you get that nose of the glide rider down under the surface, it's usually pretty good to go for the rest of the retrieve. And then, you know, as I'm working this glide rider back, I like to pause it. You know, that's it's a kind of a joke, but it's really not a joke. It's actually, it's really a great way to trigger strikes. What I'm trying to do with this lure is, I'll, you know, change the cadence up. I'll work it fast and then hang it out on a, let it glide out and just pause it in place. And, you know, then I'll work it fast, I'll work it kind of slower, and then I'll pause it. I'll fast, slow, and then pause it. Now, what do you do when it comes to the figure eight? Can you figure eight the glide rater? The answer to that would be, yeah, you can do a traditional figure eight. I have had my best success on this lure dead sticking. Now, dead sticking it is just simply, when you get it to the side of the boat, and you get it close, I'd say I got, you know, about five yards of line out here, I'm just kind of working it in place. I'll twitch it around, I'll kind of, I'll, I, I will just use about, oh, I don't know, three or four feet of line, and I'll just literally walk this lure around, and sometimes if I pause it, and I see a muskie sitting there, they'll come up and grab it. It's not really an amazing figure eight uh, triggering lure, honestly. It's one of those lures that's so slow, it stays in the strike zone for so long. If a muskie hasn't hit that lure, by the time it's gotten to the boat, you know, your chances of actually triggering that fish might be kind of low. Um, you might want to try something else on that on that fish. But, uh, but that's, that's that, uh, you know, uh, idea there is the dead sticking in the figure eight is probably the best way to go. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is when I'm fishing really shallow cover, how do you work this? I work it a little differently. So, sorry, there's somebody yelling at the, off the shoreline over here, probably at their dog. Um, so, when I'm working this in real shallow cover, I actually change my, my rod movements here. So, Traditional, like let's say I got some space between uh, the glider and the and the uh, cover, I'll push that rod tip down like this. I'll push the rod tip down. So I'm always working it like this, pushing it down, 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 down. Well, what if, what if you're in a situation where you've got really very little, I mean like, you know, inches of space between the glider and the cover? In that case, and this is very similar to the shallow raider technique. I'm going to go lateral here. I'm going to go parallel to the water surface and really switch this thing, really actually generate quite a bit more slack line. And I'm going to really use a lot more wrist twitches and slack. Wrist twitches, slack, and parallel to the surface. Those three things will really keep the glider up nice and high. Um, in fact, so high, it almost, if you do it right, looks like a top water. So, so that's something uh, that I also do. And, and sometimes uh, I'll do that when I'm working close to the boat to really, pull, to really slow it down. I'll use those wrist twitches to kind of keep it nice and high and to pause it, especially if I've got a fish following it in. So, that is your Glide Raider musky tip of the week. Again, um, I throw this lure uh, quite a bit during the summer um, on really any water that I fish, clear water, stained water, uh, but I really like utilizing it as a, a cast back lure. I'll throw it a lot more like, you know, all day long type thing in, you know, October and November when the water's real cold. I really like to go with the glider in super cold weather. Um, but during the summer, I really utilize this quite a bit as a cast back. So 
uh, I hope that these tips have helped you guys. Uh, I hope that this uh, encourages you to throw that glider a little bit more if you're not a glider uh, fan. Um, and if you already are, maybe this video helped you with a couple ideas um, with regard to different ways to work it and figure it and whatnot. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll see you next week with another Musky Quick Tips video. Thanks for watching.